the things that a living organism must do and be provided with, the town must be provided with. Uh -huh. You must eat, you must sleep, you must move around, you must go to the toilet. All those things mm -hmm. that a living organism requires, the city must provide because it's also a living organism. All right. And the city is not a village. Let us love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Beyond else, mm -hmm. before we love foreigners because they are bringing investment, let's love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then we'll ask ourselves, when you come as an investor in Nakuru, I see. in Kenya for that matter, are we sacrificing everything on the altar of the few coins you are giving us? The answer should be no. Uh -huh. But uh, prayer alone may not turn Nakuru into a magic city. <laughs> that, that is not, that, that will be naive. Prayer is good. But to say pray and then we go home <laughs> and then we elect the wrong uh, leaders. Truly delighted that you've joined us on this edition of Business Glide here on Haman Manyora's channel. My name is Richard Mwenja. Now half the time Nakuru County has been termed as the next business frontier. And just last week, President Uhuru Kenyatta conferred it with a city charter. Now, what are some of the uh, low hanging fruits for this very new city that residents and county leadership are going to reap from? Besides, what systemic failures in its administration should we address today, if not yesterday? To delve into this subject, I'm joined by the phenomenal statesman, Haman Manyora. Sir, welcome on set. Thank you, Richard. All right. Yes. Sir, last week history was made. Nakuru City conferred with, the, of course, the city charter. Now, we've seen countless crusades being held by Nakuru church leaders just dedicating the church to the higher power. Would you say that uh, probably Nairobi has failed because in the first place we never dedicated it to the church? You know, we are not there to see it being dedicated or otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. But... Uh, it's good to commit ourselves to the Lord, to uh -huh. our Mecca, whoever you conceive them to be. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, prayer alone may not turn Nakuru into a magic city. <laughs> that, that is not that. That will be naive. Prayer is good, but to say pray and then we go home, <laughs> and then we elect the wrong uh, leaders, and uh -huh. hope that our prayers will make uh, Nakuru City a better uh -huh. city than Nairobi. All right. We avoid the chaos and the dirt in Nairobi uh -huh. merely because we prayed. That is. Uh, that is putting too much to our God. All right. Yeah. After the prayers, you should go to the ground and now start and work, working. Work, work, work. Absolutely. Correct. I see. Yeah. With a new city status, of course, there is an increased need to match infrastructural levels or success of, of infrastructure in Akuru with that that is in Mombasa or Kisumu or Nairobi. Now, this will make the county leadership at least go... Uh, bigger on, on borrowing from international lenders and such. How then do you ensure that they borrow in the best interest of the locals other than just being as, used as a cash cow? I think first of all borrowing is regulated by the law. Uh -huh. There's just so much a county government or a city can borrow. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that, that at least taken care of. Mm -hmm. What you might be wondering is whether mm -hmm. they will do what the national government is doing. I see. Borrow and misuse and squander. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, we can't tell. We only hope that they, they have enough history behind them All right. to, to make them avoid those kind of blunders. All right. Nakuru residents are a bit on, a, uh, on perspective of their business growing uh, a notch higher. Would you say that they now need to work uh, deeper in making business so easy? Now, the ease of doing business should be the key interest of uh, Governor Kinyanjui, other, other than the case that is in Nairobi. Yeah, well, city status bestowed upon you gives you the link to international donors and lenders mm -hmm. and partners. I see. Uh, there are certain things you couldn't do under the law that you can now do, mm -hmm. meaning this, the town can grow much faster. I see. But uh, growth should be regulated. I, I, I think they should learn from Nairobi and the other cities mm -hmm. that... Uh, the powers you have as a city should enable you to curtail, mm -hmm. if not stop certain things that make Nairobi look like a village, not a city. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Ease of doing business should be yeah, yeah. their Ease main drive. Yeah, yeah. Ease of business, you know, like, uh, you see, what I mean is, mm -hmm. ease of doing business should not be in the traditional sense 
of how easy is it to get a license. Of course, it must be easy. Uh -huh. Easy. Uh -huh. How many licenses there are? Of course, there must be as few as necessary. If, if need be none. Mm -hmm. ah, and it works in places like Rwanda, Uganda. Nice. Uh, ease of doing business is not just access to, uh, to, to loans and other resources. Yeah. It is even as simple as if I'm doing my business, how much interruptions mm -hmm. will I get from hawkers? For example, if I'm a hawker mm -hmm. and I'm a Kenyan, how much am I protected from the city Ascari? You know what I'm saying? All right. Because if you see these towns of ours, some people have given up doing... Uh, let me tell you what happens in Nairobi. Those things you see hawkers selling, some of them wares like umbrellas, what? They get them from the shops. Yeah, the shops are doing business with the hawkers because they can't rival them. Mm -hmm. So ease of doing business must also be seen. How clean is the town? Mm -hmm. You see? How much open is the town? Is it full of border, border riders, motorcycle riders, mm -hmm. hawkers? These are Kenyans. But they cannot spoil a city because they are Kenyans. All right. They must be facilitated to do their business in a manner that does not encroach All right. on city business. All right. Yeah. I see. Nakuru is strategically positioned with regards to prospects uh, of tourism. Yeah. Now, do you find that this is the silver bullet that will make Nakuru County uh, with heavy physical muscles to drive the expenditure other than now relying heavily on the national government, the expeditor? Uh, their, 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 their growth and uh, niche in the tourism industry. You see, mm -hmm. all I've said, stop being lazy as, as Kenyans. Mm -hmm. All I've said, be serious. All I've said, think and think big. I see. Nakuru doesn't even need money from the exchequer. Really? No, what for? Let that money go to Vihiga and these other small counties. That yeah. have... But Nakuru can make all the money it needs. For... Look at the national parks in Nakuru. Look at Lake Nakuru. Look at Lake Naivasha. If you did lake tourism uh -huh. around Lake Naivasha and kick those flower farms the hell out of that place mm -hmm. because they are polluting the lake and giving us very little in terms of employment and in terms of foreign exchange, mm -hmm. lock all the flower farms out of Lake Naivasha region. Let them go away. Let them go and do business anywhere, including out of Kenya if they want. Turn the lake into a clean, decent lake with the minimal or no pollution, then start lake tourism. Right. My friend, that alone, Lake Naivasha tourism alone, can give, lake Na can give Nakuru County, mm -hmm. and in a sense, Nakuru City, 10, 20 times what it's receiving from the exchequer, a All shareable right. revenue. All right. Yeah. Sticking to that context, uh, when we talk about the subject of climate action, we are yeah. seeing Nakuru becoming heavily industrialized by the day. Now. How do we mitigate this uh, increased uh, uh, industrialization with also the effect that it has on, on climate change? First of all, mm -hmm. let us love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Beyond else, mm -hmm. before we love foreigners because they are bringing investment, let's love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Then we'll ask ourselves, when you come as an investor in Nakuru, I see. in Kenya for that matter, are we sacrificing everything on the altar of the few coins you are giving us? The answer should be no. Uh -huh. And I've alluded to the flower farms. Mm -hmm. I'm alluding to pollution of the lake. I'm alluding to activities that bring about negative climate change. Let's not say mm -hmm. we must have those investors in Nairobi, polluting Nairobi River because we need them. No. We need you. If you know we, what you do must help us sustain life. Uh -huh. Not create a few miserable jobs. And in the process, destroy all our ecosystems, which will not allow you. So Nakuru should begin by looking at sustainable development. Mm -hmm. If there are industries, and I repeat, including the flower industry, that is killing fish in Lake Naivasha, mm -hmm. that is causing harm to the lake, Mm -hmm. If they cannot reorganize their businesses, they pack mm -hmm. quietly, 
and live. And live. We shall show them an alternative site. If mm. they think they don't want to be in those alternative sites, they can go home. How about the hundreds of Kenyans who will be on the brink of losing their jobs if you face out these flower farms? I'm saying, mm -hmm. I've, I've described them as a few miserable jobs. Just a few, a fraction. Yes. In fact, mm -hmm. just as those flower farms, and I wish the pe people who make decisions in this country can listen to me. Mm -hmm. Those people that are killing the lake are also killing the workers. Mm. Yes. Absolutely. In terms of the chemicals they are handling. Chemicals that are harming the lake are also harming the workers. All right. If you have a sustainable development, if it is an industry that is conscious of the need to do clean business, clean in terms of environmental sustainability, it will thrive, the government will thrive, it will create more jobs. But these shortcuts, mm -hmm. these shortcuts, uh -huh. short-term businesses are the ones that are destroying our ecosystem. I see. In the name of giving us employment where they pe pay people miserable shillings. Wages. Yeah, forget about it. Oh, you've been on record saying Kenya is mad with dirty politics. Now, how will you advise Governor Lee Kenyanjui to not to succumb at least from political conmanship and sabotage now that he is getting increased uh, budgetary location to his county so that he just takes Nakuru to the next level of economic success? First, if, Naku if Lee Kenyanjui is not going with the deputy president, mm -hmm. and I was running Metro Raila, mm -hmm. uh, and he's going to run for governor, he must first of all win the seat. Because the remaining time, even the paperwork will not be done. <laughs> it is critical. He needs five years to do the plans and the paperwork that will see Nakuru City move. So that when he's retired somewhere, he can look at the fruits of his work. So first thing for Lee Kinyanjui, uh -huh. unless he's being made running mate, is to put strategies in place to win. Because I believe he's best placed. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking because I know him or anything. Lee Kinyanjui is best placed to take Nakuru to the next level. Really? I've observed him. Uh -huh. I can see how he works. And he's level-headed. And he looks intelligent. Mm -hmm. And he's a man who can deal with ideas. I've not interacted with him much. But I'm sure another five years of Lee Kinyanjui with the city status of Nakuru mm -hmm. will be all that the Nakuru people can wish for. All right. Yeah. Former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko has been on record saying uh, Nairobi is on that path of economic failure due to the cartels who used to mull around City Hall to get uh, some procurement uh, irregularities just in their favor. How will you uh, talk to Lee Kinyanjui to curb such issues of cartels taking over and running the, the city in their own interest rather than the interest of the residents? That's why I say uh -huh. he has the benefit of history. Of hindsight. Mm -hmm. He knows how Nairobi developed to where it is. Mm -hmm. He knows how the Mzungu left and the Ngorokos took over. Mm -hmm. He knows how the cartels have evolved over the years. Mm -hmm. He knows the connection between the cartels and the people in power. Mm -hmm. He can avoid that. He's starting fresh. He's starting fresh and that's why I'm saying you need a leak in Anjui for Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Because he's sharp enough to understand how the cartels developed in, evolved in Nairobi. He can avoid that path. He can chart a path of honest service to the people of Nakuru. Mm -hmm. Honest path. I see. Yeah. All right. Mombasa County, Nairobi County have been largely uh, been pressed by the security issues. Talk of terrorism, gangs, and, and so forth. But however, for Nakuru, it's a bit more secure. Talk of the vast military barracks that are around the area, uh, NYS institutions. Should you say that now this is the factor that will make Nakuru on a competitive edge than Nairobi and Mombasa? And we should invest more even on securing uh, Nakuru. And Nakuru has so much going for it. In mm -hmm. fact, when I was growing up, mm -hmm. we used to say repeatedly that Nakuru was the cleanest city, Absolutely. town in, 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 in Kenya, mm -hmm. the base railway station. So I much see. goes for Nakuru. If we can build on that legacy, on the tradition of Nakuru being a clean place, mm -hmm. a cosmopolitan place where people live in peace, save for a bit of what happened in 2007. If we can build on the fact that the outlying areas are fertile and agricultural, uh -huh. yeah, you know, and uh, the many things going for Nakuru, mm -hmm. he can create a, a great city. All right, a great city, because the excesses that Nairobi suffer from, <clears throat> including security, uh -huh. Nakuru 
doesn't seem to face that problem. All right, mm -hmm. almost the last. Uh, the major crisis in most of our cities is now the slums. Talk of Kibera, talk of Kondele slums in Kisumu. For Nakuru, should we first dis uh, address the issue of affordable housing and getting people out of the slums before we go heavy on, say, airports and uh, road infrastructure just so to meet the city status? We first address the housing crisis. I, I think what we should be saying is mm -hmm. Nairobi is what it is. The chaos, Nairobi is a dirty village. Mm -hmm as opposed to a city, absolutely, <laughs> because of the absence of policy uh -huh. and planning. Mm -hmm. But overall, the absence of leadership, because Nairobi had plans. There are mm -hmm. plans for this city. But uh, the leadership has been wanted. So, Lee Kinyanjui, and I'm praying that he wins, mm -hmm. if he's not going for bigger things. All right. He should provide the leadership that will create the policies, the plans, to avoid the chaos that is Nairobi. Uh -huh. you, you know? I see. So that whenever you are creating an industry, it must be in the right place. Mm -hmm. It must be properly serviced, including residential areas. When you plan a town, you must know the people who are going to work in that town, where do they live? Mm -hmm. How do they travel? Where do they get their food? Because a town, the, the best way to understand a town and small towns like Kisumu, Eldoret, mm -hmm. now Nakuru with a city status should know that a town is like a living organism. Mm -hmm. The things that a living organism must do and be provided with, the town must be provided with. Uh -huh. You must eat, you must sleep, you must move around, you must go to the toilet. All those things mm -hmm. that a living organism requires the city must provide because it's also a living organism. All right. And the city is not a village. That's why we have bylaws that apply within cities and towns that don't apply within the rural areas. That's why land in a city to address your housing is never for sale. Uh -huh. Land in a municipality is not for sale. Developers apply to be allocated land for specific uses, mm -hmm. which they are then given time to implement. Mm -hmm. If they don't, that land is in process. In I Kenya, see. land that is allocated is then hoarded, held for speculation, and is sold. Yeah. That's why we have slums in Nairobi. Right. That's what Lee Kinyanjui and the people of Nakuru All must right. avoid. All right, talking about the land issue, we are going to see much of capital appreciation in Nakuru. Now, how do we address the issue of now property development and investment companies coming in and acting in their best interest rather than interest of such uh, uh, investors? We've, we've talked of issues in Kitengela and Siokimau of people being duped their savings in the real estate sector. Now, will you uh, advise Governor Kinyanjui come with a framework that will see those who invest in Nakuru say in real estate have their uh, investment secured? Exactly what I've said, my friend. Mm -hmm. It is relatively cheaper to buy a house in New York, mm -hmm. in Tokyo, <laughs> than in Nairobi. Why? Lee Kinyanjui and others like him should do what is done within other cities. Mm -hmm. Municipality land is not supposed to be for sale. It is held by the municipality. And people are allocated the land for specific development. And a given time, I see. the lapse of thereof of that time mm -hmm. without development, mm -hmm. the land reverts back to the authority that allocated you. I see. If Lee Kinyanju were to move in that direction, there will be no slums in Nairobi. All right. In, in Nakuru. I see. Yeah. The second last, uh, will you advise, uh, say, Governor Otichilo and the rest now to, uh, for Kinyanju to pass on the baton to them and make sure that they subscribe to the Urban Areas and uh, Cities Act so that in the next three, four, five years we can have Vihiga Town as the next city? Or it's a far fetched dream? It's not a far fetched dream. Uh, experts tell us mm -hmm. in the next so many years, most of these rural places will be urbanized. Mm -hmm. There's so much urbanization going on in, in Africa, mm -hmm. and especially places like Kenya. All right. So whether, whether you want it or not, it has to happen. Nyahururu will simply develop into a city. It's natural the, because the trend is mm -hmm. heavy urbanization, which Rahil has been saying we ought to mitigate. Mm -hmm. Mitigate, not to stop, to mitigate by saying, why would the people rush from Vihiga to Nairobi? Let them right. find in Vihiga those things they are coming for in Nairobi. All right. That way, the pressure on our cities will go down. All right. And even the need for city status may not be as important and as urgent mm -hmm. as it's going to be in the future. 
after people see Nakuru, everybody will want. All right. Let our rural areas, like Raila is saying, and I agree with him, mm -hmm. and a bit of bottoms up, let let our rural areas be attractive mm -hmm. to live in, to invest in, to work in, to do farming. Then there will be less migration to the cities, All right. which is predicted I see. in a bad way. The very last, as Manyora, would you uh, advise uh, Nakuru residents not to be so much upbeat and excited about the new status, and as such, not be sure of uh, her heralding of a new beginning? And they no, should... no, no, they should be excited, they should uh -huh. be happy, they should be vigilant, they should come up with ideas, they should be part of the government, they should put the government on its toes, they should ensure next year offers them an opportunity to elect, because city status for Nakuru will count for nothing, zero, <laughs> unless they have the right leaders. All right. So I am I asking see. the people of Nakuru to ensure 2022 from the president down and especially the local leadership, mm -hmm. especially the governor, they must elect the right man. And you I, find Lee Kinyanju the I best think candidate? I Kinyanju is a good man. I see. Well, that's I think where he has never talked. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he was at the university sometimes, and I used to talk to him once in a while. All right. But in terms of what I'm saying, disclaimer: no. At least Not at all. Well, that's where we wrap up our conversation today, talking matters Nakuru City and what the new city status uh, will herald in terms of economic prosperity of the residents. But before we go, our fan of the week is Amani Yeri in Bamburi, Mombasa. Amani from Bamburi, Mtamboni, Haujambo Sana, uh -huh. Wasalimu wana Mombasa wote. All right. Well, until next time on Business Glide, my name is Richard Mwenja, but coming up next on your screen is the Business Glide African Proverb of the Day.